are back. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jason Burma sitting in. We're joined by Mark Dice. And, you know, just a heads up to people, I think that we're just about to ruin the end of the movie because it's really important where this film goes because, again, it's going to be in the minds of millions because it's on the big screen and people don't read anymore. They don't think for themselves. They watch the TV and they go to the movies and that's where they get their information from. And really at the base of why this movie is so dangerous and why Mark and I are focusing on this, you know, outside, even though the Illuminati facts versus fiction, or facts and fiction, does cover some of this stuff, is because a lot of people are going to be talking about the Illuminati and saying, well, that's just a movie. Mark, let's give away the ending. How does Dan Brown wrap up Angels and Demons? It's fascinating. I do admire him for his uh, evil cunningness because they build up this tremendous story that the Illuminati's been functioning for all these years, that they've secretly been active you know, through the Bilderberg Group and everything, building their New World Order, and now they're going to destroy the Vatican uh, and, and unleash their, their true religion, which is science. And meanwhile, the, the character, Tom Hanks' character, Robert Langdon, at first he was, you know, he's an expert on the Illuminati, but he thought that they went into extinction, and he's like, this can't be true, and then he starts to realize that they really are still active and that that they've been active all this time and so they build it up and build it up and then it turns out that there actually is no such thing as the illuminati and it they really did according to the to the book and the film go into extinction back in the 1780s after they were discovered and that the entire plot to blow up Vatican City was perpetuated by one rogue Catholic official, the, the camera lingo, who was like the assistant to the Pope, who decided to, to spring this plot to, to blow up the Vatican City, but then at the last minute, he himself saved Vatican City from the evil Illuminati to show that God was triumphant and that the Vatican and, and, and Christianity was triumphant over the evil Illuminati, and it looks like everybody was just afraid and had bought into the conspiracy theories, including Tom Hanks' character, Robert Langdon, who was an expert on the Illuminati. And it turns out that they really don't exist anymore, and it, it is only a conspiracy theory. The website is markdice.com. The new book is The Illuminati Facts and Fiction. And we're going to go to your phone calls. Uh, Joshua in Florida, you're on the air. Doing Hey, Good. how you doing, gentlemen? Good. Good. Uh, I want to say, Mark Dice, man, I followed your work for a while. I've got your book. And uh, we actually, you probably don't remember this, but we actually tag-teamed uh, Alan Combs the other day whenever uh, he had Alex Jones on the show. You were talking about uh, your book that you sent to Sean Hannity. That was classic. But uh, I wanted to, if I could, real quickly, let everyone know, let the listeners know, uh, we are doing an Oath Keepers Memorial Tea Party. It's going to be in Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just trying to get as many people to come out reaffirm their constitutional oath. You can find out the details at meetup.com backslash we are change Florida. <clears throat> That's just a, one of the things we have going on. But uh, I'm pretty anxious to get your new book, Mark. I really enjoyed the first one. I've used it to wake up a lot of people. So keep up nice. the good work, I think, my I think I've heard your phone calls into Colm's show, you and your friends. That's fantastic. Keep, keep yep. at it. Yeah, All right, absolutely. thanks for the call, Joshua. And that shows, Mark, that, you know, even as small as we all are individually, we can have a great effect if we have the will to take action against these tyrants. It's as easy as picking up the phone at times and challenging the position of a national figure. You know, there's been times, I don't even post many of the calls that I make anymore. It's such a hassle. But for anybody that's new to this, you can listen to many, many of my phone calls on markdice.com or just search me on YouTube. Phone calls into these talk shows, these mainstream talk shows, Rush Limbo, Sean Hannity. And I, you know, you start, you're new to this. You start wondering, wait, is the, is the Bilderberg Group so secret that they actually don't know about it? And so I wanted to test that. Maybe I'll, I'll finish that on the other side. Yeah, obviously, you know. When you first come across this, you're like, well, someone's got to be talking about it. Somebody I know and trust. And then you find out, yeah, they talk about it, but they laugh at us when we bring it up. It's the, it's the Alex Jones Show with Jason Burmis. We'll be back after this. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.tv. You're listening to GCN, the world leader in independent talk radio. All right, folks, we are back, and we're joined by Mark Dice. Now, I just got some breaking news. This one's off a of Wired. 
and I want to get your take on this. I mean, we haven't really discussed some of the current issues like this DHS document going after the alternative media, the patriot movement, people who are anti-technology, anti-illegal immigration, really anybody, lone terrorist cells, leaderless organizations. It's it's so broad and so disgusting that it it, it just disheartens me to see this out of Wired. Bloggers TV go nuts over misleading Patriot Act arrest claim. See, we're misleading people when we tell them, hey, they arrested this 16-year-old kid for a bomb threat, and they're not letting anybody go talk to him, and they're holding him indefinitely with no bail. He's 16 years old. Let me just read this, because, of course, they demonize Alex Jones. God forbid Alex Jones reports on what the media is reporting. We're the bad guys, by the way. It's the false TV news reports heard around the world. Of course, we're liars. Rally North Carolina's WRAL 5 reported last week that a 16-year-old bomb hoax suspect was hauled out of his mother's home by federal agents and is now being held without any legal rights on the authority of the 2001 USA Patriot Act, which suspends the Constitution. This tale of injustice has since shown up on the Drudge Report, Dig, Reddit, and thousands of blogs in uh, and shoot from the hip mailing list. The boy's name is rising on the Google Trends list. Um, radio show host Alex Jones interviewed the boy's mother on Tuesday, and pundits on the left and right are seizing on the story to rail against the government's unfettered power to make an innocent citizen disappear at will. Some outrage reports are claiming that the teenager hasn't even been charged with a crime. The arrest of the teenager is real enough. FBI, FBI agents investigating a February 15th bomb hoax that uh, evacuated the mechanical engineering building at Purdue University traced the phone call to the juvenile's Oxford, North Carolina home. Uh, his mother uh, with, served his mother with a search warrant and arrested the teen. See, they don't say they came in the middle of the night and jackbooted him. Oh, they served a warrant and arrested the teen. He's 16 years old. Now, remember, the Supreme Court is now going to rule on whether they can put minors away for life. That's right, minors away for life. And then they'll just lower and lower what that standard is, you know, from serious crimes, from murder to rape, to, oh, you're speaking out against the government? Terrorist. Life in prison. You could be an eight-year-old kid if they pass that. It's It's disgusting. Uh, they issued a press release about it, omitting the suspect's name. That was on March 5th, and he's been held without bail in Indiana ever since. Well, not only without bail since March 5th, apparently no one's even been able to talk to the kid. Uh, the claim is that the boy is the victim of the USA Patriot Act, though it appears that that's cut from whole cloth. While there's plenty to criticize about the post-9-11 law, see, they act like, oh, we're on your side. It doesn't contain any provision that abrogates the defendant's right to a trial. It's also not responsible for making an illegal phone call in a bomb threat that's been a federal crime since 1939. So charge him with the crime and then let him talk to a lawyer. That's how it should work in this country. Let him talk to his parents. But that's not what's happening. Uh, the boy's mother, Annette Lunderby, has even acknowledged. See, they say they act like she's acknowledged that it's not the Patriot Act. In interviews that her so son has been formally charged, has a court-appointed attorney, and has already made appearances in front of a judge. No military tribunals here. On Alex Jones, uh, Lundeby seemed to more or less admit that the U.S. Patriot Act connection was something she dreamed up on her own. Yeah, she dreamed it up. Here's the quotes they use. And they say they're charging him under the USA Patriot Act, so, well, they're not saying that, but that's exactly what they're doing. And then Jones says, well, it's in the newspaper. All of their actions point towards that, but they don't deny it either. Um... You know, basically, it just says we're nuts. We shouldn't report on it. They're not using the Patriot Act, even though, again, they came in the middle of the night. They went and got this 16-year-old boy. And, you know, whether or not he did it, maybe he did do it. Uh, he should be charged with a crime, and he should do time like a juvenile. He shouldn't be charged as an adult, I can assure you of that. And who knows if he'll ever get his day in court. Mark, what's your take on this article? Well, it's interesting that Wired magazine would do that unless they're doing an investigation about or a story about the... I, the IP spoofing, which is apparently uh, looks like what happened in this case, is that somebody had spoofed this guy's IP, and, and through through the internet, you can actually make phone calls to people and and caller ID spoof and make it look like it was someone else. Which is, I don't know if that's even illegal anymore, but I'm 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 sure that there's still services out there that do that. So maybe if they were doing a story about that, but it it is very strange that this is from Wired magazine, who 
uh, several weeks ago did a, a very bizarre article about the Georgia Guidestones and then said that I had uh, inspired the vandalism against the Stones and, and took a couple quotes from me out of context and, and put it in the article. I don't know what is happening over there at Wired Magazine, but I, I do feel bad for this poor kid. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's let's jump to a few more phone calls. Let's uh, let's go to Kevin in Boston. Kevin, you're on the line. Yes, oh, sir. Thank you for taking my call, Jason. Hello, Mark. Um, hey. And uh, thank you to Stuart Rhodes for uh, starting Oath Keepers. Uh, I was able to take the uh, Oath Keepers pledge at Lexington Green this past April 19th, and it was a great event. I was glad to hear you uh, having him on to promote the future events. Uh, I encourage people to get involved in that. I also... Um, sit on my local LEPC local emergency planning committee and uh, with the uh, so-called swine, now it's the H1N1, whatever they're calling the man-made virus that uh, we had to deal with. Um, 